Hi, I'm Kara. I'm one of the CBTs here at Dev Lewis, and this is Simon. And today we're going to talk to you about skunk spraying and skunk spray toxicosis. Um, so we get a lot of calls, especially during the summer, in terms of dogs getting into interactions with skunks. Um, and owners are very, very concerned, and they do some Google searching and get more concerned because they learn about skunk spray toxicosis. But we're going to try and clear up a little bit of the myth around sort of skunk spray. Um, oftentimes, when they get sprayed, dogs will get sprayed in the face, but can get sprayed elsewhere. And usually it's just one quick burst. Um, this is incredibly foul smelling, incredibly noxious, and that's what it's meant to do. This is that animal's only line of defense to not get eaten. So it's meant to be incredibly potent and be a rapid deterrent. So it can be pretty alarming um, as well as very stinky for owners. But what happens is the skunk spray is actually uh, a mix of compounds. Um, most of them are called theols and they're sort of oil based and they will irritate any sort of mucous membrane that they get on. So oftentimes we'll see swelling around the eyes, there can be tearing, they can have conjunctivitis. You'll see lots of drooling um, because it gets into their mouth, as well as you may, if it's um, inhaled or swallowed, see some vomiting from these guys. And while alarming as that is, that's what it's meant to do and it will get better. Very rarely is there long-term damage from skunk spray. Um, so what you can do is try to flush out your dog's eyes with water or saline as much as you can. Although the actual skunk spray is not water soluble, we are just trying to flush out as much as we can to protect the eye itself. But in terms of getting the actual substance off of the fur and to get the smell out, just simple bathing with shampoo is not gonna work. The tomato juice myth does not work as well. What you'll wanna do is a mixture of hydrogen peroxide, um, a little bit of like liquid hand soap, and some baking soda. When you mix that together, you'll bathe your dog in it um, a couple times and that should be able to get the actual scent and the oils off of the fur. You do wanna be extra, extra cautious when you use it around the eyes and the face though. We usually recommend that you don't do it around the eyes because hydrogen peroxide can be very damaging to the eyes. But if you happen to get it into the eyeballs, flush and flush and flush with water and saline as much as you can um, to try and protect those very sensitive areas. But with a few washes, you should be able to get it out. Now, with skunk spray toxicosis, that sounds much more alarming um, than it really is because it's super, super rare. In all of the literature that I've read, I've only come across a few cases. It's not very well documented. Um, and those cases were dogs that were either sprayed incredibly heavily directly into the face, and a lot of it was inhaled and swallowed, or one of the cases was a dog that actually was sprayed multiple times within a week. Um, so you have to get a very large dose for this to potentially happen, and even then it's very rare. But what that is, is it can actually cause an anemia, um, very much like um, acetaminophen toxicity. So basically we will produce hemoglobin called methoglobin that cannot carry oxygen to the tissues. So you have hypoxic tissues um, that actually will start to sort turn blue or muddy. Um, you can also have some pale mucous membranes as well because we're just, uh, we are anemic. We're not having the red blood cells because they're lysing themselves. So if you do start to see that after your dog has been sprayed, usually we'll start to see those effects um, within several hours of being sprayed. The dogs become very lethargic. They start to vomit profusely. They become very weak, disoriented. You should seek medical attention right away for that and run a blood panel just to see what's going on. But typically when a dog is sprayed, um, they recover just fine. It's quite alarming right when it happens, um, but it fades as it's meant to do. So you shouldn't be too alarmed for it, but you can always contact your local veterinarian, give them a call and just ask a few questions and see what they, what they recommend. And thanks for watching.